Today we're talking about aux tracks within Pro Tools. So, what are aux tracks? What are they used for? How do you implement them in Pro Tools? We're going to talk all about that in this tutorial. So, if you guys want to learn all about aux tracks in Pro Tools, stick around after this introduction. Welcome everybody, I'm Dan Spencer and I am the Audio Sourcer. So this is the channel where I teach you how to perfect your audio recording, mixing, and mastering skills. So before we get to the video, make sure you guys smash the like button, please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. So without further ado, today we are talking about Pro Tools aux tracks. So aux tracks are very important in Pro Tools. Though their uses have dwindled over time due to updates that have come out in Pro Tools, you will still be using aux tracks in every session, I guarantee that. So the two most common uses for aux tracks are to create submixes and for your time-based effects like reverb and delays. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to use it both ways. So we're essentially going to create a submix for drums, and then we're gonna create a reverb return for a snare drum track. And I'm gonna show you both ways in this tutorial so you'll be able to know how to do it going forward. And before we get to that, I want to let you guys know that I have a link popping up in the top right corner now to my Pro Tools training playlist. And within this playlist, I have videos ranging from beginner to advanced, full of great content to help you guys get better at using Pro Tools. So definitely check out that playlist after this video. So with that being said, let's get into our first example of using an aux track, and we're going to create a submix. All right, so we are gonna take all of the drum tracks here, which are the yellow tracks, and we're gonna send them to a drum submix. So we got the kick, we got the kick sub. Now I already am sending the kicks to a kick submix, so we're actually just gonna take this kick submix and send that to the actual overall drum submix. And then we got the snare and hi-hat. So what we need to do is we need to first create an aux track. So on a PC, it is Control shift n to launch your new tracks window. On a Mac, it is Command-Shift-N. So we are going to do a stereo track here, and we're gonna do a stereo aux, and we're actually gonna call this drum bus because it's essentially a bus. Okay, so drum bus, so we're gonna create that. Okay, so we got our drum bus right here, and I wanna send it to, in this case, my master output, which is already going there, which is one and two, so I'll leave that as is. But now we actually need to do the routing. So for where it says no input here, click on the little arrow, go down to bus, and then we need to choose an open bus on here. So we'll go to bus three and four. And then we don't wanna just leave this name bus three and four, cause that's generic. So if we right click on it, and then we go to rename, let's call it drum bus. Boom, so now we got our drum bus here. Now we actually need to route our drums to it. So we start with our kick sub mix here and we go to the output of that. Let's click that, let's go down to bus, and then we'll go to drum bus, click that. So now our kicks are now routed to the drum bus. Let's do the same thing for snare, and let's do the same thing for hi-hat. All right, so now your kicks, snare, and hi-hat are all routed to this drum bus. So one thing to keep in mind, if I was to solo up any of these tracks here, like if I sold this up here and I hit play, you would not hear it. And that's because this is not in solo safe mode. At least I think it's called solo safe. Don't quote me on that. But anyway, to get into that mode, you want the solo button here to be in a grayed out state. And if you hold control on your keyboard, or I believe it's command on a Mac, and you press it, you get this little grayed out state here. And that's how you wanna leave your buses all the time. Cause that means that if I was to solo any of these now, I can actually listen to them. Because if this was not in this case, I would have to go over here and actually solo this one every time too, which is kind of annoying, all right? So just keep that in mind, all right? So uh, just to prove to you that this works, let's actually just give it a listen. All right, cool. So you saw all the drums being routed to the drum bus here, so you know that that works. So that is our first way of how to use an aux track. So let's move on to the last way, which is to use it as a effects return. So we're gonna use it for reverb. All 
All right, so for creating effects return, again, we need to create another aux track. So let's do that. We also wanna make this one stereo and we will call this reverb. And we will send this to our master output and we need to set up our routing again. So we need to go find an open bus. We'll do five and six. Let's right click, rename it. Let's just call it reverb. Actually, let's call it snare verb because, well, it's strictly going to be for the snare. Okay, so we got our snare verb uh, input set up. Let's actually go choose a reverb for it here. So we are going to put it on the first insert. And I'm going to use, let's see, we're going to use Luxurious Plates because that's one of my favorites. It's actually a really good uh, snare plate in here. Uh, we'll go to a preset in here. We'll go down to drums and then we'll go to snare verb. Uh, the time on this reverb tends to be pretty long. It needs to be shortened up usually, but overall it sounds pretty good. All right, so we got our reverb and we got our input routing set up. Let's solo safe our reverb by holding control on a PC or command on a Mac and clicking the solo button. Okay, so we got that set up. Now, we need to go over to the actual track we want to send to it. And we're going to, of course, use, you guessed it, the sends. So on our snare track here, we're going to go to the first send here. We're going to click there. We're going to go to bus. And we're going to find the one we just made, which is our snare verb. We're going to click that. And now we've got a new fader here. And now we can control how much we want to send to it. So basically what we're doing is we're sending a copy of the snare track to this new reverb aux track and we're going to be creating a blend between the dry and wet signals and this is how you want to do reverb and delay you do not want to put reverb and delay directly on a track unless you're using it for a specific reason okay so keep that in mind so why don't i play the snare track here and we'll dial in this reverb so you can see how it works All right, there you have it. It is as simple as that to use an aux track as an effects return. And those are the two ways that you use aux tracks within Pro Tools. So I hope you guys learned something in this tutorial. And if you did, give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe so I'll be making this content for you and hit that notification bell to know how many videos coming out. So with that being said, until the next video, I will see you guys later and peace out.